Yo, what is up guys? This is Troy D from the Troy D 24 7 Mall channel, your source for on point and no hype reviews. We are back yet again, everybody. We're back with another fragrance review right here, guys, on my day off. And today I will be talking about one of the latest Ormond Jane fragrances. And if you are into Middle Eastern perfumes, I mean, you gotta listen to this one right here because I'm pretty excited to tell you my results on this fragrance. Now, before I continue, please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys, okay? Liking, subscribing, and watching the ads is a great big deal to this channel. Guys, we are headed towards 20K. It is a milestone indeed, guys. So please like, subscribe, share this to your friends. And if you wanna join my full bottle giveaway, all you gotta do right now is be a subscriber right here and be my follower at Instagram, TroyD247, guys, okay? So thank you all for your support. And the fragrance we will be talking about today is none other than Ormond Jane Arabesque. Yes, Ormond Jane Arabesque. This is the uh, bigger sample, official sample of Ormond Jane Arabesque that I did get from Beverly Hills Perfumery, guys. And again, I do have a discount code from Beverly Hills Perfumery. It's TroyD247 Mall for a discount plus some niche samples in the bundle, guys, okay? So hope you guys can take advantage of that. Now, anyways, Ormond Jane. What can I say about Ormond Jane? The brand is like a chameleon. I mean, they can make these British gentlemanly perfumes, mainstream appealing, and then, you know, they can do these like trade routes, uh, really underrated Middle Eastern trade routes collections right there. And if you ask me, what is my favorite Ormond Jane? I know you guys are gonna ask me that. It's gotta be black gold. Now, Arabesque right here, what got me curious about this fragrance was that A, it seemed like a standalone Middle Eastern fragrance. I mean, it was denoted by the gray bottle, which is different from your classic Ormond Jane bottles, as well as the trade routes collection in orange. The gray bottle kind of said, this is kind of like a different one, okay? And so it kind of gave me the vibes of, man, you got to review that. And at the same time, uh, you also have the classic formula. If you look at it on paper, seems like a classic Middle Eastern formula that maybe is either made for those that want to get into it or maybe those that are looking for a standalone type of Middle Eastern fragrance. So that is what I want to find out. And I wanted to find out as well if this was a unisex, a femme leaning or masculine leaning type of rose oud because I really do have a lot of those. Let's go spray this thing right now and find out. Let's go. Mm. Okay, guys, now let's talk about Ormond Jane's arabesque right here, guys. Now, again, just looking at the structure, you already know that this is a rose oud fragrance, guys, okay? You have the three tenets of rose oud. You've got the saffron in the beginning. You've got the heart of rose, and then eventually you've got the oud. But of course, even with that, different brands can make different permutations of this lovely formula. And so Ormond Jane has their own as well. Now, when it comes to the opening, guys, I would say that this is the different one. This is the different shader, something that really modifies your classic oud formula because you have the intro of Black Courant as well as Bergamot, guys, okay? And these two put together really provide an acidic zing, a little uplifting zing to really balance the eventuality of something dark or something gradient-like, something fade to black when it comes to rose oods. In this opening, I particularly like this. Although it is not a long-lasting black currant bergamot combination, but in the beginning, matched with the spice of saffron, you really get kind of like a balanced, kind of semi-uplifting feeling with the acidic, the fruitiness uh, of the black currant and bergamot combo matched with the spice of saffron and the rosiness, guys, okay? So that's kind of like the intro. It's a semi-uplifting one, which is a little bit different from your classic rose oods that usually go into a gradient or sometimes you've got violet there as the balancer. But right here, guys, you do get a fruity black currant bergamot mix that I really like. And that's really one of the big differentiators here in the formula. Now, it doesn't take too long in this fragrance before the rose starts kicking in. And I'm talking about 10 minutes, maybe even less into this fragrance, guys. And of course, you've got the kind of like mix with a saffron. So it's kind of like the seamless transition, almost like you're already smelling something rosy in the beginning, but the actual rose 
really starts kicking in in the 10 minute mark. And if I would describe this rose, this is a dark rose, kind of like a dark Bulgarian rose. It smells like you're smelling a bouquet of dark rose or dark rose petals, guys, okay? And that is the type of rose that comes in. It's pretty obvious and you can kind of separate the smell of the rose and the spice of saffron right there, guys. And so it is a beautiful dark rose that comes in at the 10 minute mark. And it is also accompanied by the spice of black pepper, guys, okay? So there is that overlapping darker gradient of the dark rose with the black pepper, guys, okay? So that starts coming in in the 10 minute mark. And after that, it's really gonna be like this full-blown rose, I would say, starting at the 30 minute mark onwards, guys. So let me say this, guys, you gotta love rose. You gotta get into rose. And I think in my opinion, if you're gonna get into a rose oud such as arabesque, you gotta understand that rose ouds are to give this enchanting, magical, sultry, almost like out of this world experience. And that was my experience when I first smelled rose ouds um, in Dubai and in other places in the Middle East, guys. I mean, it's just enchanting. And actually, sometimes when it comes to rose ouds, there's no like practical reason, you know, to be wearing them, especially in the Western world, but they are there to really heighten your sensation and make you feel like you are in a magical place, you know? So it is really nice and sensual and beautiful, guys. And so that's what I can say about this rose. Again, starts kicking in in the 10 minute mark all the way to the 30 minutes full blown. And then you've got a full on rose, guys. Now, the mid of this fragrance, does have some jasmine into it as well. So jasmine is kind of like that floral balancer in the mid that goes in with that dark rose. It kind of balances it and it doesn't make it into a full-blown like dark gradient thanks to that jasmine right there. And I would say that that is a long stage in this fragrance. I would say up to the fifth hour mark or sixth hour mark, guys, that you will get full on high quality rose and high quality jasmine together and a little bit of that spice still in arabesque. Now, just like the rose is a powerful core note here in this fragrance that overlaps and comes in at the opening, the oud as well, which is a base note of this fragrance, comes in at the mid of this fragrance, guys. And the oud, I would say, is non-animalic. Okay, so that's one thing I'm gonna say. This is not an animalic oud. So like I said, there are these modifiers. You have this like semi-fruity, acidic, uh, tart uplifting intro to begin with. And then the oud itself is not an animalic oud, guys. Okay, so it is more of a smoky, dark oud wood. That is what I can say about this oud right here. It is not animalic. And it kind of lands a hand somewhere in the mid, I would say in the three hour mark. That's where the oud starts coming in. And you get that bakur feel. You get that little smoky feel from that oud, a little bit of that dark oud, dark woody oud that you can smell mixed in with that rose. And it is a beautiful mix indeed. On the dry down as well, you've got some earthy notes. You've got the sharpness of patchouli. You've got some oak moss and then eventually some gradient musk, guys. So again, these notes are kind of expected when it comes to enchanting romantic uh, gradient fade to black rose oud guys with the musk being there as a sensual gradient and then you've got the patchouli which is a real great bridge note from the rose and then you've got oak moss to add some mossiness some earthiness into this mix but nevertheless guys like i said is gonna be rose oud all the way okay once the oud starts overlapping you'll really smell kind of like that smokiness that dark woodiness with the dark rose as a perfect combination and then of course the jasmine as your balancer that is what you'll get for hours and hours with this fragrance now here's a question that you're probably asking what is the sillage and projection of ormond jane arabesque so this one right here is not really nuclear. I'm gonna say that because there are a lot of rose ouds that are pretty nuclear, like Dasman by Bodicea the Victorious. That's pretty nuclear. This one right here is more than an aura scent. It's not nuclear, but it is also powerful. And you will get noticed 100%. It's got a scent trail and it is gonna be beaming for quite a while. That is one thing I will say. And I would say that that strong sillage would probably last you up to several hours. Several hours with a consistent 
Aura scent with a scent trail. So this fragrance, although not a nuclear beast, is consistent. It's still strong. You will get noticed. So I think that this was really made for the Middle East, in my opinion, where the smells are pretty competitive between people that are wearing these very strong rose ouds. I would say that the strength of arabesque can compete with the best of them in the Middle East. Now, total longevity though is over 12 hours, but I would say that the strongest parts last up to 12 also. So I would say that past 12, you still get whiffs here and there of this fragrance, but it's not gonna be as strong as the first 12 hours that you're wearing it. Okay, so it's pretty much 12 hours significant scent. It's not eternal by any means, but I think that, you know, when it comes to these fragrances, that's a pretty good coverage. And with the aforementioned strong sillage and projection being consistent, I think that this is exactly, you know, an optimal uh, type of performance unless you're really looking for a super loud, like, rose oud. Uh, there are other ones that are like that, like Dasman. This isn't but nevertheless, performance is great on this one. Now to me, aside from the classic rose oud formula in this fragrance as a positive, the other big positive here is the price. It is the price, guys, because for $245, you can get 88 ml of this formula. And don't ask me why it's not 100 ml, guys. Don't ask me. I don't know why, but it's $245 for 88 ml. That is a price that is very common in just almost any niche fragrance. Like the Kajal that I'm about to review soon is $220. This is a classic rose oud with the ingredients being truly high quality. I would say rivals even the Bodicias, the big Bodicias out there in terms of quality for $245, 88 ml. That's a lot of usage right there. And also I will say, that this fragrance is for those that are trying to avoid the animalic barnyard or some people call fecal, I don't like to use that term, fecal ouds that have like this, you know, absolute barnyard smell. If you're trying to avoid that, but you still want to get into oud, you want to get into the mystical, magical world of rose ouds, this is one of those. And you can pretty much avoid all that animalic barnyard slash fecal stuff that could possibly offend others. This is not that type of perfume. This is dark oud wood, smoky, and it mixes really well with that super, super high quality rose. And so if you're trying to avoid that, this is the perfect spot to be in and to try Middle Eastern perfumes, a classic rose oud formula that you will truly enjoy, guys, okay? I would say it's not really groundbreaking, especially if you're, you know, into the game, the Middle Eastern uh, perfume game, high quality. It's nothing new, but in my opinion, Ormond Jane did this as a standalone, kind of like for people to just get into Middle Eastern perfumes. And the name Arabesque is so direct, it's so straight that there's no other way you could like, you know, complicate things. It's a Middle Eastern classic rose oud scent with a little twist right there in the beginning and a beautiful non-offensive oud in the end. Again, usage wise, really enchanting and lovely. I don't know what you guys use rose ouds for, but for me, it's for personal reasons. It's just truly an escape it's truly an emotional, enchanting experience that only Rose Oods can give, guys. And that's why I still collect these things, guys. So also, I do want to say that this fragrance leans slightly femme. That's another thing. So this fragrance, yes, you can wear this as a guy. And I have a lot of Rose Oods, like I've said, Carbon Sapphire, Dasman. But this fragrance right here, I would say the black pepper is the one thing that makes it kind of masculine in the beginning. But I would say that once that rose starts kicking in mixed with that floral jasmine, that sweet jasmine, it is mostly slightly femme leaning, guys. Okay, and that is a long coverage of that rose, even with that oud overlap, guys. So I would say that this was made for women, to be honest. I think that a lot of women that want to get into the oud game, the rose oud game, will really get to enjoy this. Again, really great value 
for a high quality product, not really that groundbreaking if you're deep into the game, but it is a standalone product that you can get if you've never tried any rose wood. So that is it. That is my review of Ormond Jane's Arabesque. Let me know in the comments below what y'all think of this fragrance, if you've tried it. Again, if you're wondering what are my favorite rose oods, definitely Dasman, definitely Carbon Sapphire by Bodicea. And some other ones that I haven't really reviewed. I will get to that pretty soon, guys. So again, thank you very much for watching. Please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys. And I'll see you guys on the next video. God bless. Take care. Peace.